Hello everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101. Thanks for joining in today or catching the replay. Um, today we are going to be making these really fun love rocks. I'm going to let my iPad refresh here so I can get you up on the screen so I can see comments. Um, so as you pop in, make sure to say hello. I can make sure that I'm getting my comments, but that way I can see overhead and keep on the screen. So um, really funny. I used to doodle this design all the time when I was younger on my notebooks and things like that. And I thought it would make a really cute rock. So I have stumbled across, I have a whole stack of these fun um, rock canvases um, from Cab Couriers that I had gotten a set of a while back. And as I've been unpacking and getting a little bit more organized, um, I found a whole bunch more of them. So you can definitely do this design on anything, but these are really fun to paint on just because they're super flat. Um, so they're a great surface for anything you want to do, but you can definitely do this on any stone that you have around the house. So the first thing we're gonna do is just lay out our design here. And that's probably the hardest part, if you could even say there is a hard part to this design. I'm going to be filling in with acrylics today. I've got some craft smart, some deco art, these fun um, three colors, lavender, cherry cobbler, and desert turquoise. So um, any colors you have around or paint pens are good for filling these as well, um, whatever you have. I'm gonna go directly with my paint pen. Um, it's just an extra fine point pen. Um, this is my Artistro one, um, you can use Posca, whatever you have. Uh, since we're going to be filling in, it's a little forgiving, so if you have to fix some lines, since you're going to color in essentially this design, you um, can go right on your rock. If you're more comfortable doing pencil first, you can do pencil first as well. So we're just going to make a heart first. We're going to fill as much of the space as we can. I've got a little divot here, so I want to make sure that that's kind of out of the way. So we're just going to place a heart. And this will work with any style of heart that you create. This one will be a slightly different shape. Oop, a divot there. Um, than my first one. Just place it on there. And we'll re-outline the whole thing when we're done too. So just make sure the outside edge is kind of the shape that you want. When you color it in, you can fix lines like that. Uh, now, first thing, we're gonna do our L. So you wanna give it a little bit of shape off to the left-hand side. And like I said, this is a slightly different shaped heart. So you can kind of see that it kind of customizes to any heart shape that you create. And we're gonna come down with our L and then we're gonna swoop it flat along the bottom and then up the right-hand side a little bit. And then we're gonna create the bottom of our L. So come across and swoop down. Now the next letter I do, I skip over my O and I do my V first. Now you want to use this as your inside of your V. So we're just gonna create the outer edge here. Then we're gonna try to mimic this line slightly on the right hand side and then come down like that. Now we're gonna fill and place our O in the space left behind here. And then we're going to create our E. And this E is a little bigger than the O, so it, it, you kind of have some room to kind of play around with your shape of your E a little bit. I do this part first, and then come back here and add kind of a swoop to give that left hand side. And then a heart here off to the edge. And the heart, you can kind of place to just, it just fills in the extra space all the way to the edge, like that. And again, if you need to play around, you want the outside edges of your shape to be what you like. We're gonna cover a lot of this area in when we're painting anyways. So, like I said, I've got three colors off to the side. You can do this with whatever colors you want. I'm gonna use the same three colors. I'm gonna change up um, the placement of the colors a little bit, just so they're not exactly the same. But I'm gonna work right out of my lids because I'm not blending or anything like that. Uh, so we're just gonna dip right in and start filling in our letters. So since it's a darker stone, I know I'm probably gonna need at least two coats of paint. So the first one I do nice and thin. 
so that it dries quickly. A lot of people think, oh, if you put it on really thick, you won't need two coats. Most of the time you're gonna end up needing two coats. And this way we have a faster dry time on our first coat. Make sure you get all the way up against those edges because we are going to come in after and reline everything. So it's better to get over your line slightly, not over as far as onto the outside, but I should say onto the line so that you will have nice crisp edges. Your color will go all the way to the edges of your design. We're just going to be filling these in. And you could do this with, you know, a different color for every letter too. I just like these three colors together. And in there, that's so you can fix your mistakes. And again, you won't see that black through once we do a second coat. I always like to pull into my design or into my color space. Like I won't pull out into the point. I tend to place paint down and then get out there and pull into the design. The more you paint, you'll find little tricks and things that work best for you. What works well for one doesn't always work well for another. I am gonna do the same um, color combinations here. So I'll do the L, V, and the heart here in the purple. I think I'm gonna do the O and E in pink and then we'll do teal in the background as well. You could go extreme and do fun designs in each one of your letters too if you want to take it up a notch. But you know how I like to keep these nice and simple for you guys, 101. So if you're watching live right now, feel free to drop the state you're watching from. Just love painting big where you are. This time of year is usually the most popular time of year for rock painting and hunting and hiding in areas. Just because you get your kids out in the parks searching around for them, which is really fun. Finish up our purple here. And like I said, I'm just doing a really light first coat because I know I'm going to need a second coat. And this will allow it to dry quickly. Now, I'm not even going to wet my brush to clean it off. I've just got a paper towel here. I'm just gonna spin it in there. It's very lightly damp, but that way my paint doesn't get watery. If you have water in the brush of your paint and you're working in your lids, you can get some water in your paint, and, which isn't really gonna hurt it, but might make your paint a little thinner for what we're doing. So we're just gonna go right in these two letters here. If you're working at home, take your time. Always working at a slightly faster pace. And I'm live, just so you guys aren't stuck on here forever. <laughs> So far, Dark Days have been working well for me to hop on live here, so I'll try to keep up with them on Thursdays as much as I can during this summer break. Kiddos go back to school, I believe, on the 18th, and we'll really get on a good schedule. And you could leave the background, the rock color, if you like to leave more um, stone. You could just leave it like this, let this dry and do a second coat. But I like filling in the heart all the way. So I'm gonna go in with this teal next, or turquoise, desert turquoise. Really just helps make that heart shape pop and like I said it helps you 
um, if you're just drawing right on your stone to cover up any little mistakes that you maybe have made. Drawing a perfect heart every time is pretty tricky to do, even if you're painting all the time. You guys know I do lots of hearts and even I fumble with it. And by the time we get done with this teal, you can see that purple is already dry, especially when you're working right on the stone. It kind of sucks it up a little bit. If you're on a white stone, you might be able to get away with a single coat, or if you base coated your stones, you might get away with a single coat. Like I said, get all the way out into those points, even if you're on top of your black a little bit, because when you reline, you want that paint in all the little nooks and crannies. Inside your O and your E dot here. Uh, for anybody wondering, I am using a size three round brush. Uh, it really depends on the size of the heart you're working with what size of brush you're going to need. I would suggest a round brush because you'll be able to kind of get out into all these little tips that are created by our shape. This is one I'm really expecting to see you guys all come back and share in the comments that you gave it a try. Those are very cute and really pretty simple once you've seen them laid out. Alright. That's the gist of it. I'm going to do a second coat. Sometimes when it dries, you can tell it's a little bit darker than sometimes it looks when it's wet. But I still like to do a second coat. Give a little Right there. Oh, that happened. So again, I'm just wiping off my brush on a damp paper towel. Um, that way it's not going to make my paint watery. And we'll just go in quickly and do a second coat here. Obviously, you can tell from the one here on the left that I relined the entire thing um, once it's dry. See the nice crisp outlines. All the way out there to that black. You can go a little quicker with your second coat just because you've already got a pretty decent first coverage. It's a little easier not to get all the way out into all those little tiny crevices. Right as much. Unless you see an area that looks thin. Just make sure when you're working out of your cap, you don't accidentally get any of the other paint in there. Using a 
tips and helps me not waste paint. When I squirt it out, I tend to not use it all. I don't know if anybody else has that problem. So when I do this, I actually am kind of pinching the tip and kind of squeezing it a little bit. It kind of helps get any of that paint that's maybe in between your bristles. Let's see, with that second coat, you can't see black through, so don't worry if you've got any of those little mistakes in there that I'm not going to be able to see them. Do make sure your first coat is dry though before going on your second coat. If it's not, sometimes you'll pull up paint from underneath. Um, that's why that first coat I did so light so that I could have it be dry pretty quick here. You could even do the first coat and walk away, pour yourself a cup of coffee or something. Or work on a couple stones at a time. Alright, let me get the tea on here. And I'm trying to stay away from my edges a little bit here. Kind of slipped over a couple places, but that way I can get it lined out pretty quickly. When you paint, the edges usually dry fast anyways, or faster than the inside at least. Anybody watching ever got these stones yet from Cap Couriers? I uh, see them in a lot of rock painting groups, people sharing that they paint on them. I've used them before in the past. You may have seen them. But they're pretty cool. I think they actually call them rock canvases, and that's exactly what they are. Nice, flat rock painting surface to work on. You can hear my little one upstairs. <laughs> Almost here. Again, I know I said this before, but take your time. I'm moving a little quick just because you guys are on live. to go a little faster. get too much paint on your brush sometimes I wipe it on a piece of paper I don't want to ever leave it leave a big glob of paint and then working in these tiny little spaces you can come back and swipe through it again after you've wiped it off on the paper Oh, there we go. 
maybe need to go in with a little more pink there, but I can go ahead and line it. That's something I can touch up after the fact. Okay, I'm gonna wipe out my brush real good here. Make sure you get cap your paints. And I'm just gonna kind of work where I can see. You can tell when you tilt a rock if it's still wet in certain areas. So I'll avoid the wet, wet areas, but I'm just gonna go back through and reline the stone so that these lines are nice and crisp. And this design really will pop. Opens up all the little corners. And so I ran the, that paint all the way into the corner. When I can, I try to do one continuous line every once in a while on some of these longer areas it's hard to do. I'm gonna mess that one that on. I might touch that up with a little paint too. If I'm gonna lift up, a lot of times I'll do it where there's a seam in the design that's overlapping. She's got a little tickle in her throat upstairs. So if you are gonna touch up something like that, make sure you let your black dry. You do not wanna pull black into your acrylic paint. Uh, that will dull your color really fast and then you'll end up having to do another coat on top of it anyways. So speeding up that just to color it in isn't worth it. By the time I get done lining this whole thing, I'll probably be able to go and touch that up. When you're going over a crack like that, really light, very light handed with your paint pen. Um, you don't want it to splatter on you. But how cute, I am gonna fix this. Oh, again, it's the same as the acrylic paint. If you tilt it slightly to the side, you'll be able to see if it's still wet or not. I'm gonna give it just another second or so here to dry up. I'm gonna try to get in there really nice and carefully so I don't have to reline it again but you know if I do it's not the end of the world it'll probably take a couple coats to cover the black anyways but we're just gonna kind of get a little bit closer the lines are a little thick on me just like that I did on the on the teal below there too but that's it. It's a super simple design. These are really great kindness rocks to hide around. Something somebody might not rehide, but that's okay, right? <laughs> I like to hide rocks that I, in my mind, people find them and they keep them and they look at them, just make them happy. There we go. A little spot down here. I might want to gut it out. I don't want to make a little bit. Okay. So that's that, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this simple rock painting tutorial for beginners. If you do, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Come back and share a picture or image. If you give this one a try, I would love, pun intended, to see your love rocks. Um, that's my favorite thing when you guys come back and share in the comments when you complete one of the tutorials. 
from our lives because that's probably the best motivation I have to get on and do these lives. So thanks everybody that joined in or if you're catching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. We'll be back hopefully on Thursday again. I'm on a streak right now. So hopefully next Thursday we'll be back with another simple rock painting tutorial for beginners. Bye-bye now.